Well, this week's cold snap has Texans paying close attention to our electric grid, many doing so with anxious memories of what happened to our state back in 2021. One potential solution to ensuring a reliable grid is increasing our state's use of nuclear energy. Well, now the Public Utility Commission of Texas is saying we need to think nuclear and recommends the state should move in the direction of becoming a global nuclear energy hub. But what would that look like in our neighborhoods? How far away are we from actually building nuclear reactors? KPRC2 investigates. Robert Arnold's been working on those questions. So, uh, Robert, first, uh, thanks for being uh, back here with us. Let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, what are we looking at in terms of demand, energy demand? Well, the PUC did a study as part of its effort in looking at whether or not we should move in the direction of nuclear energy. And what the PUC is basically saying is that all sectors of Texas could see a 100% increase in energy demand by the year 2050. So the governor said PUC study whether we should go in the direction of nuclear energy. The PUC took more than a year to study this and then came out with a report in November saying, yes, we should start moving in the direction of this because we have to keep up with population growth and the rapid growth of technology like AI and crypto mining, all these operations that are going to require just vast amounts of energy. So that's why the PUC recommends, yes, we should start going in that direction because right now only 10 percent of our grid actually uses nuclear energy. And that comes from reactors in Matagorda County and Somerville County, which is near Fort Worth. So that's the recommendation. We should start expanding that effort. And when we spoke to the former assistant secretary of energy for the U.S. Department of Energy, Charles McConnell, who's now at the University of Houston, he agrees with the PUC. And we're facing today now a marketplace that's going to perhaps in Texas over the next 10 to 15 years double the amount of required electricity at peak. We're going from today about 85 gigawatts in the hot summer days to as much as 140 to 150 gigawatts. So it's almost a doubling of where we are today. And I said gigawatts, not megawatts. Let's just say all, all, all green lights. Let's just, you know, for hypothetically, all green lights. How many years are we talking? 20 to get to the kind of gigawatt scales that, that I mentioned earlier. So Robert, does that mean we're gonna see some of these big domes being built all over the state? No, not, not even close. So the reactors that we're talking about, some are the size of this room, some are even smaller. And a lot of that technology is being developed right up the road from us at Texas A&M. These smaller reactors are much cheaper than their domed predecessors and could be used to help power specific areas of the state or even specific facilities. Okay, so Robert, I'm guessing there are still a lot of hurdles ahead here. Oh, yes. First of all, this technology is still in development. The federal government still has to sign off on any new reactor, no matter the size. And in fact, Texas is part of a just filed lawsuit over federal regulations. Our attorney general claims is actually slowing progress. And then there's the time it takes to get a design approved, built and plugged into our grid. And our legislators have to come up with some new systems, all of which is why Rice University professor Daniel Cohen says this is a huge problem for a grid that we already know has weak spots. Mm. Our power needs are growing so fast, and the only power sources available to supply that anytime soon are solar, wind, batteries, and natural gas. Those are the four key building blocks to our power grid, and that's going to stay that way uh, at least for the next decade. Uh, any additions we get from nuclear are likely to be very small compared to any additions we get from those other sources. All right, well, we've covered a lot of ground yeah. this morning, Robert, but I know you'll be back at 8 o'clock on KPRC 2 Plus now. Yes, and that's because the technology for these smaller, more regionally based reactors is still being developed, but it is going forward. And that's whether Texas jumps into the nuclear energy market or not. Our neighbors at Texas A&M have put out a call for energy companies to come and build and refine their prototypes in College Station. So we wanted to show you what they're working on and what we may be seeing power our homes in the not so distant future. We also wanted to talk about safety concerns and clear up any misconceptions. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to get into for sure. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Robert. And we're going to give you a sneak peek inside of their workspace coming up at 8 a.m. on our live stream and a really important part of what we've uncovered. We're talking about safety concerns and clearing up misconceptions about nuclear energy tonight on KPRC 2 News at 6.